All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mark. I am a third year student at McGill. Uh, I'm an international student. I'm actually from New Jersey in the United States. So just like a six hour drive south of uh, Montreal. Uh, I am actually getting two bachelor's degrees. I'm getting a bachelor's degree in music. I do play the trumpet. I'm also getting a bachelor's degree in uh, the faculty of science, majoring in statistics and computer science. And then I'm actually also uh, minoring in management. So I am actually studying a lot of different things, uh, but I am very passionate about everything that I'm studying. So for my first slide, uh, I'll be talking about kind of uh, taking advantages of student services that we have. If you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, Nick. Awesome. So uh, basically there's one building in particular that I'll be talking about a lot today, and that's the Brown Building. And this is basically where a lot of student services uh, have their locations in their, uh, their offices. So we have the Campus Life and Engagement Office here. So if you do choose to live in residence in your first year, uh, the Campus Life and Engagement will be in charge of uh, hiring what we call floor fellows for you guys. So they're basically RAs or DONs just to help you if you're uh, maybe uh, having an issue adjusting to living on your own or, so, or something like that. Um, also, they're in charge of sorting students into residence. And also in the, in the unlikely event that you'd like to switch residences, they can also help you with that as well. We also have the scholarships and financial aid office within the Brown Building. And this is basically your go-to location uh, to see if you qualify for, for financial aid or maybe what we call our work study program. So our work study program at McGill basically gives uh, selected students uh, <clears throat> preference for some job openings on campus. Or in general, if you just like to see uh, if you qualify for government aid, this is definitely where you should go, the scholarships and financial aid office. We also have the Career and Planning Service Office here, which I think is an amazing service that not enough uh, students take advantage of. So it's basically uh, an, uh, it's a, a service where uh, some uh, like hiring like professionals will basically look at your resume and give you advice and look at your CV. And they'll also maybe do like mock interviews with you, um, if you, especially if you have one coming up. And this is a free service that's offered. Uh, I honestly don't think a lot, like enough students know about it. It's such a great way to get ready for maybe an interview that you have coming up. We also have the Student Wellness Hub here. So this is basically uh, where you can go if you want to speak to your local wellness advisor, if you have any mental health concerns or just physical health concerns in general. Uh, additionally, we have Service Point. So uh, now we're moving to a different building, which is the middle building, uh, the middle photo there. And so Service Point is basically the first place that you'll actually go to, I, I guess I would say, as a McGill student. And this is where you actually get your McGill ID. And so I would just make sure that, uh, just a little tip, is that you make sure you look good uh, in your photo and you have a nice outfit on because the photo uh, that they take of you is the photo that you have on your ID for your three years at McGill. And so actually one of my friends didn't like her photo in uh, when she got her photo taken. And so she actually like lost her card or well purposely lost her card. And when they went back and she all she got all dressed up and ready to go and she was ready to get a new picture taken and they just said, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna print out a new card for you and also charge you $20 because you lost your ID card. So uh, I just recommend, I know, especially if you're moving into an apartment or into residence, you might wanna dress comfortable to move all your stuff. But I would recommend at least for the picture, uh, trying to look nice. <laughs> we also have uh, scattered around campus, uh, depending on what faculty you're in, we have specific faculty internship offices. And so since so many students, um, uh, since so many McGill alum end up staying in Montreal after they graduate, because obviously it's such an amazing city, um, a lot of the times when uh, companies in Montreal are looking for interns, they will actually reach out to McGill first to see um, if there are any prospective students who are interested in an internship. And so for example, if a company is looking for a software engineering uh, intern, they might go to a, uh, the Faculty of Engineering's internship office and then they'll say, hey, we're looking for a software engineering intern. And if you are a software engineering major and you go to the faculty internship office, they can kind of connect you. And I think this is a really great way to <clears throat> maybe get a leg up on your competition compared to maybe other applicants for the same position. And two other services that we have, which I think are great, uh, especially since they're student run basically and they're up to student volunteers, is what we call drive safe and walk safe. So these are, I'll just first describe drive safe. So basically if you're anywhere on the island of Montreal in the hours of the night uh, between I believe around like, I believe like 10.30 p.m. and like 5 a.m. Uh, and you feel unsafe, basically you can call this number and student volunteers will come uh, pick you up and drive you home. Also we have walk safe, which is uh, basically 
uh, if you are on campus late at night, maybe you were studying at the library late and you have to walk home, basically you can call uh, the number and a male identifying student and also a female identifying student will go and uh, walk you home. These are two really great uh, services that are entirely student run, which I think is amazing. Uh, we have enough student volunteers where basically students will pull off uh, one all nighter uh, once a month. <laughs> So that's everything about student services. <clears throat> and now we'll move on to student government, if you can go to the next slide. And so um, I think uh, all six of us can attest to how passionate our uh, student body is when it comes to our uh, student government uh, organization here, which is called SMU, which stands for Student Society of McGill University. And so uh, I was involved specifically in SMU uh, a lot, especially in my first year. And so I was actually on two councils uh, where I got to meet a lot of people, uh, make a lot of connections that, uh, and a lot of friendships that I still have today. Uh, so these two councils that I sat on, uh, in the top left-hand corner of your screen, uh, that's the first year council. So basically this is a group of first year students on council that will host very fun events. We have, for example, we held like a, a free food event Actually, I think we held like three free food events actually. And so uh, it just, we hold a bunch of events to get first year students to get to know each other, to socialize. Um, it's a really great time. Also, I was involved on the uh, fall reading week committee. So believe it or not, this is actually, well, this is actually our last ac academic year where we won't have a fall break. The only uh, day off that we have in the fall term is for Thanksgiving. Uh, so basically a lot of students were asking if we could get uh, maybe a longer break just because uh, it's kind of hard to constantly be studying and never have a break. Um, and so basically this, this committee was formed to propose academic revisions, ac uh, pr make a proposal to change the academic calendar. And so it was actually recently passed. And so by fall 2021, which, is, which I'm assuming most of you guys will be here, um, you'll actually have a fall break. So it's pretty cool. Um, but those are more on the entire, uh, university level. Uh, it was these are councils that are impacting the entire university. However, a lot of students instead do like to uh, sit on departmental uh, organizations. So for example, we have the Psychology Student Association, we have the Political Science Students Association. So kind of smaller departments also have their own organizations uh, just to handle more academic matters specific to uh, students in that department. Um, so you can see those are some students in the Nursing Undergraduate Society. Um, so yeah, that's everything about student government. Next, I'll be talking about tutoring. And so uh, since, especially in your first year at McGill, when maybe uh, you're learning how to study for exams or you're learning how to uh, learn in this lecture format, uh, basically I, I, could, I would completely understand that it might be a little bit difficult to adjust and you might have some difficulty understanding certain concepts. And so McGill does provide a wide variety of resources to make sure that uh, you can get the help that you need to uh, succeed here academically. So uh, for example, we have um, team tutors, which are basically, especially in your introductory courses, but also uh, for some majors, uh, honestly, they're team tutors for many levels of courses, maybe even in the second and third year uh, that you're here at McGill, you might have team tutors. And these are basically, uh, students who have just taken the course and they did an amazing job uh, in the course. And so the professor actually asked them to come back and tutor. And so uh, basically McGill pays a tutor. So you don't actually have to pay anything at all. It's a free tutoring service, which I think is really great. And you can see in the bottom uh, photo there, that's a picture of Leacock 132. This is our largest lecture hall on campus. It does seat 612 students. And so obviously that's a very large amount of students. And so I know it might seem just a little bit intimidating, at least that's the sentiment I felt when I first walked into this uh, lecture hall. But uh, you'll quickly realize that professors do an amazing job keeping the students engaged. Um, and also we do have smaller sections even when you have uh, these large lectures. So for example, if you're gonna study something in the life sciences, uh, we will have labs, of course. Uh, if you're majoring in maybe something more computational like uh, math or computer science, we'll have like weekly tutorials, which are led by a TA. And these will basically be <clears throat> uh, extra review sessions or where you can receive like extra problem sets uh, for extra review. And if you're in the faculty of arts, we actually have conferences. So for example, if you're taking a political science course, uh, every week there'll basically be a, a conference. Uh, it'll basically be a group discussion facilitated by a TA. And it'll just make, 
it'll just, uh, the purpose of the conference is just to make sure that all students are really understanding the readings and to kind of make sure that no students are left behind. Uh, so I have to say, uh, I won't lie, I'm sure at one point in your time at McGill, you will not understand something. And so uh, it's important to know all of these different resources that you have available to you uh, to help you maybe overcome something that you're struggling with. Okay, so I, uh, on the next slide here, we have uh, some information about music and theater. So as a trumpet player myself, I figured I would definitely talk about this. And so <clears throat> we do have in the top photo there, that's actually, fun fact, the person conducting the pit orchestra below the stage is actually one of our tour guides, Zach. He wants to become a conductor, and so they actually let him conduct a rehearsal. I don't know, I thought that was pretty cool. So uh, McGill, uh, the Shulk School of Music, which is the music school of McGill, they put on a, like honestly so many different performances and productions every year. And the tickets are very, very, very affordable. And fun fact, if you can get a ticket from a music student, uh, you can actually get the ticket for free because music students actually get tickets to performances for free, which I think is pretty cool. We also have a bunch of acapella groups, uh, as you can see in the bottom uh, photo there. Uh, a lot of my friends are involved with, with that uh, it's a really great place to meet friends. They are such a strong community. Uh, it's really, really fun. I've been to a lot of their performances. It's a really, uh, really great time when you go and see them perform. And we also have dance groups and a McGill Theater Club. Uh, fun fact, the McGill, so the McGill Theater Club does put on uh, one production a year. And also, uh, this, so yeah, it's just like a fun fact, the concept of Riverdale was actually invented here. Uh, Riverdale, the show on Netflix, I'm sure you guys have heard of it. So pretty cool. And on this last slide, uh, I will be talking about the McGill Fitness Center and the McGill Gym. And so um, I'm sure you guys wanna know when it's cold out uh, and you maybe don't wanna go on runs outside uh, and you just wanna go to the gym uh, where that is. And so the McGill Gym is honestly located like really close to campus. Uh, it offers a lot of very affordable fitness courses uh, which are especially popular in the winter when it's maybe a bit more difficult to stay active. So uh, actually in my first year in the winter semester, I took a fitness course called Abs, Back, and Booty, and it was very, very good and also extremely cheap. We actually did the math and it was like $3 for an hour if you attended every session. So it's really affordable. Uh, and I honestly think it's great for mental health because honestly, I study like, I try to study during like the day and like usually try to avoid studying at night. And so um, at night I'll try to like go to the gym and it's just a great like stress relief. And it's like nice to not be, well, currently right now, like be staring at my screen all day or, uh, just be studying all day. So it's a nice break. Actually, last term, you can see, uh, I've actually picked up swimming. You can see our swimming pool uh, and the photo on the bottom there. And so we also have an indoor track. We also have uh, squash courts, a basketball court. Uh, there's really so many different uh, uh, facilities that we have within the McGill Fitness Center. And I'm sure you guys are almost all aware, but we do also are, we are actually right next to Mont Royal, which is a great place to go on walks. Uh, maybe you're, you're a little bit stressed with a specific uh, course. You can take a break by going on a walk in Mont Royal. Personally, I love going on runs there. It's really great to have that kind of escape from the city, uh, kind of like a nice peaceful place to go and uh, run slash walk. So yeah, that does conclude my section. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me specifically, you can also uh, just chat me uh, privately.